we are going to start off with our power rankings. Connor, take us away. Top five. As you know, list is pretty much similar to last week, but we got the Chiefs, the Bills. I moved the Eagles up. Um, I put the Ravens in there, and I got the Packers still at five, even though they lost to the Giants. I think when it all comes down to the wire, you know, I'm going to trust Aaron Rodgers to do it. He got unlucky last week. They led him all the way down to the goal line. They were going to score, but, you know, shit happens. Sometimes you lose football games against good teams with good coaches, like the Giants really have in Brian Dable. So I, I think the Packers will get right. I think they're still a top five team. Is Dable a uh, coach of the year candidate? Has, give Fuck it to him. Yeah, give it to is. him right now. Give it to him right now. I mean, I think I think he's got to be the reason Matt Rule lost his job. I mean, you look at Matt Rule hasn't won anything, and you got to kind of wonder. Why? You know, why can't like he can it? tell you it's a process, but then you look at Dable, a team that I mean, who didn't think they were winning maybe three games this year, sitting yeah. at four and one, beating good teams. Dable's almost doing more with less. Yeah, more with Funny less. Funny enough, a lot, too. A lot there less. was a I mean, you PFF don't have CMC. Clip. Right. There was a PFF clip today where Collinsworth was talking about Matt Rule, and he played a clip, and it was some talking about how he just needs like a few years or something wasn't built. It wasn't Rome. I don't know. Whatever. And then he's like, Dable's done it in his first year with like no receivers. None. And Dable's got to be him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's putting he's putting guys like Danny Dimes. Now people are wondering, does he stick around? <laughs> right. I mean, right. And, and it was a pretty clear no. Danny Dimes has done this year. And now you're kind of like, wow, if they can win games with him, why not ride with him? Considering it's hard to get a quarterback, especially if they're not going to be in a position to get a top guy in the draft. Free agency isn't just a hit every time. I mean, we saw with Russ, can't just go grab a veteran. <laughs> Doesn't always work. Thanks. So Job you got to well ride done. with who you got. Yeah. All right, Nathan, let's hear that top five. Yeah. Before I get to my top five, I would like to say about the Packers, something that I heard, uh, not to be a hater, I'm not a Bears fan or anything, but uh, <laughs> really? they were talking about Rodgers, and I think everyone expected Rodgers and the Packers to, uh, the offense to be a little slow this year. I think their biggest scare for them is their defense. I mean, everyone on that defense almost is a first-round pick for them. A dude that they drafted in-house, and I mean, the defense is playing like garbage. I mean, you can't always look at Rodgers. I mean, Rodgers is going to do a lot, but that defense has to be way better for them. Should be a top five defense pretty easily letting, with the talent they have. Letting up 27 to the, to the Giants, to Giants yeah. and then 24 to Bailey Zappe and the Patriots yeah. last week at home. Mm-hmm. A little yeah. scary. Not good enough for that defense, for sure. But uh, <laughs> my top Let's five, go. pretty similar. Pre- <laughs> pretty similar <laughs> is the Chiefs, Bills, Eagles, Ravens. And then I got the 49ers in here. I like the 49ers. I mean, especially recent years, going to the NFC Championship almost every year the last couple of years. I think the big thing with them is, I mean, they were on the Trey Lance project all year. Jimmy G's in. And yeah, he knows the offense. But every offseason for the NFL, you have to change your offensive scheme a lot because, I mean, you're seeing it with the Bengals right now. They're kind of getting figured out. And, like, they didn't – clearly Taylor didn't change their offense a lot. A lot so – he didn't have the playbook all offseason. He's just kind of looking at it now because he's the starter now. So I think they're only going to get better on offense. They finally got Kittle involved in the game last week. The defense is always going to be great. I know they just lost uh, Mosley to an ACL tear, which is tough for them. But, I mean, that's just a team. Kyle Shanahan, I'd put my money on him all day. Yes, sir. I agree. Tavarius Ward has been playing very good, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Also don't know about Nick Bosa and his groin. Yeah, that's tough. Groin. Yeah. that's tough. I mean, Tell, tell me a Bosa brother that doesn't get hurt every year. <laughs> well, they're doesn't both, Joey they're both hurt with groins both right now. Right now with groins. I mean, yeah. I've never seen Joey Bosa play a full season. It's because they're fucking muscle hamsters, yeah. bro. I mean, yeah. Ready to stretch. Players, lean out a little bit, bro. Yeah. <laughs> All right. My top five. I think top three is the same as in the, just in a different order as these two. I'm going Eagles, Chiefs, Bills, Cowboys, and Chargers. I really want to talk about the Cowboys for a second. It's not the offense that I want to talk about. It's the defense that I want to talk about. Everything is f- just clicking. Micah was hurt yesterday, and he came in and played on third down. At their money downs. He finished with two sacks, I think. He's almost, I think he's top three or top five in all, like, pressures, care- sacks, TFLs, hits. all that. Yep. Depoy is loading for him. Mm-hmm. If Dak can just come back and just, He's obviously going to be better than Cooper because they had a hundred uh, yard. <laughs> no, I mean, just tell me if they if they lose one, maybe one more. If they lose one more game before Dak comes, you think you bench him for Dak? 
If he wins one more? No, I'm saying if they only lose like one more game. Oh, under, yeah. If they only lose one game under Cooper Rush because they haven't lost one. Well, I don't think the they thing. will. That's but. the thing. If Jerry Jones paid Dak, he's not going to sit him. And he had 100 passing yards yesterday. And the last nine came with like three minutes left in the fourth to get him to 100. But I'm t- Dak just needs to be better. And that's all it is. And that team can go. I was saying it before we got on. I don't know if this is blasphemous to say to like Bears fans as myself. But is the Cowboys defense playing like the 2018 Bears defense? Uh, it looks really similar. The D-line is just dominant. I mean, Marcus Lawrence, Dorrance Armstrong, I believe. Yeah, he's one of those guys that are just playing crazy. Of course, Micah, I don't know. They're they're fired up. I like what I'm seeing from them. Just stay away from that curse that they, they come get into like middle of the season. Yeah, we'll see what happens comes playoff time, if they make it there. But I think they're in a pretty good spot right now. They are. Now. But the NFC East, NFC, NFC, yeah, tough it's tough. So far. It's tough, but... I think they'll be all right. I think you're right. All right. Mine, I have the Eagles, the Bills, the Chiefs, the Cowboys, and the Ravens. I've had the Eagles at one for the past two weeks, so I have to stick with them just because they haven't lost. I promise you, as soon as they lose, they're going right under the Bills and Chiefs. (laughs) But I want to talk about the Ravens real quick. Short, sweet, simple. They don't look that great. You know, Lamar's missing throws. They're just, they don't look like a John Harbaugh led team, right? Jim, sorry. I get it. Mixed. I no, John, yeah. John. Yeah. It's fucking crazy. <laughs> oh, but, you know, they've only been losing for 14 seconds of gameplay. And I think that's very impressive. So once they clean up those mistakes, I think that I think they're going to run away with the AFC North for sure. Um, and Lamar is definitely him. Although last night was tough, but he's still him. What, uh, what I like about the Ravens is they. They're a team that consistently beats teams that they're supposed to beat and is always in games with good with good teams, which is recipe for winning football. They never play down to their competition, and they rise to the occasion when they play good teams. So Ravens are definitely a team to look out for, and I think they'll only get better with the secondary and stuff. I know they've had some injuries in the secondary, and I really think Kyle Hamilton will once turn he gets up used in the, to it, once yeah. he gets used to it. That, that secondary with Humphrey and Marcus Peters had a good game last night. I mean, there's so much talent back there. He should have a chance it, to blossom It almost later it's on. like they have to figure it out yeah. back well, there because there's mm-hmm. too much talent. Too mm-hmm. much talent. If I'm not mistaken, they were regarded as like one of the best units before the season, oh, and yeah. they just didn't play well. So yeah. we know they have the talent. They're going to come around eventually. Yeah, it, it's also tough to play well when the game script is that you're always playing a team that's good behind. Like that team is going to pass a, a lot. So obviously, you're going to allow the most passing mm-hmm. yards in the league when the team has to throw 100 times a game. Right. So, like, yeah, people get caught up in that, oh, they're letting up all these yards. But it's not on the secondary completely. I thought the most impressive thing yesterday, because I know Burrow had some quote about, like, how do you get better? But they were say, he they couldn't beat the cover two last night. or just two guys over the top. They could not do anything. I know T. Higgins went down uh, early in the game, but still, like, that's it's still kind of, it's still no kind of worrisome game. that mm-hmm. they're not attacking downfield i think it was four yards per attempt yesterday the lowest he's ever had in his career so shout out to the ravens defense they really showed i was really scared about the three receivers of the Bengals gonna go light it up it also helped that t got hurt too yeah but Mm -hmm. But that yeah no when you look at joe burrow's completions from that game he had like maybe three that were over 10 yards jamar chase had like and i'm like i always said like a couple weeks ago i'm like zach taylor doesn't run call plays where the routes are going Farther than ten yards, so it's fucking it's on Zach Taylor at this point. And Hello, you know, I hate that guy. Yeah. How Hello, many people Matt do you think regret taking Chase over Jettas in fantasy? Because uh, I would say a lot of people took Jamar over Jettas in their in their drafts. Yeah. Every draft I was, Jamar went first. Really, I mm. did take Jamar, but that that was in our dynasty, like yeah. 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 over yeah. Jettas. But that was based on him being a year younger, and I think. The quarterback situation, I feel like Joe Burrow a lot, a lot more sustainable than Kirk Cousins being older. Kirk There's won. no way he'll be there in two years if they haven't won a Super Bowl yet. You know, you got to move on and find someone that can maybe elevate you right. after Kirk Cousins. Right. But I totally, I totally agree. Jettas is, I mean, I think it's situational though. Jettas is in that O'Connell, O'Connell, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Offense now where Cooper Cup was in. I mean, they're <laughs> giving him looks. I think Taylor. Kind of like what I said earlier, I don't think they changed a lot in the offseason with their offense, and people are figuring it out. They're taking away the deep stuff. 
forcing Joe to be less aggressive, which he's not that kind of quarterback. He doesn't want to take what's given. He wants to make a play. That's kind of his game style. He's a gunslinger. I mean, that's why he's like, he's the far of this generation, in my opinion. He's going to throw 20 picks, but he'll give you 40 touchdowns this year sort of thing. But no, I totally agree last night. And I think last night was a great emergence of Marcus Peters, who they were looked at such a great unit at the beginning of the year because they had all that talent. But I mean, Marcus Peters was coming off a bad ACL tear. That stuff, you know, it takes a couple weeks of confidence to where you're not going to get burnt and your knee's not going to give out, that sort of thing. So I think the Ravens defense is only going to get a lot better in the secondary. They had Jamar upset last yeah. night. Oh, oh he, yeah. was, he was he visibly was visibly sick. Vis- yeah. yeah, visibly upset. In his face, Marlon was talking shit. Well, especially because Boyd. I don't think Boyd is going to get enough attention Boyd didn't with do no much Higgins. Yeah, but no, no attention from Higgins being taken away from Jamar. He's getting locked up. And Tyler Boyd's a great three receiver. But a two receiver who's going to really get a lot of separation, I don't think he's no. in that situation to to be able to. They struggle without their three. Yeah, guys no, they need for it sure. for sure. Hayden Hurst looked nice, too. Mm-hmm. Hayden Hurst is a great yeah, player. Well. I've been so high on him. I think he's a great receiving option. I'm glad that he's actually getting used, yeah. too. Um, one more note on the Ravens, and then we'll move on to the first game. Like I said this before, and they're tied for the most picks in the NFL with eight and tied for the most turnovers in the NFL with 11. So, like, they give up a ton of yards, yeah, but they are making plays. They're getting the ball back for the offense and whatnot, too. 